There is not a single baseball player alive today that was more hated than Alex Rodriguez. He played 22 seasons, made 14 All-Star games, won 3 MVPs, 10 Silver Sluggers, got paid over $420 million, and dated every hot female celebrity alive. So maybe that's why everybody hates Alex Rodriguez. Or maybe it's because he got caught doing steroids multiple times, lied about doing steroids multiple times, allegedly threatened people who told on him for doing steroids, told on three other players for doing steroids, was ridiculed by dozens of teammates including these two, signed the biggest contract in sports history twice, served the longest suspension in baseball history, cheated on the field, cheated off the field, cheated on his wife, was reportedly brainwashed with the form of ancient Jewish mysticism by Madonna, was called a slumlord, was involved in a sign stealing scandal, sued the MLB, sued the Players Association, and even sued the team doctor. Yeah, maybe that's why everybody hates Alex Rodriguez. A record suspension tonight for baseball star Alex Rodriguez over his use of performance enhancing drugs. He could have been the Michael Jordan of baseball. What an embarrassment! A phony to the end! Oh, the reason we didn't sign A-Rod is because there was no possible way that anyone could be worse for your team than A-Rod. He's like a guy you pay to mow your lawn. And instead of mowing your lawn, he comes over and takes a dump on your lawn. One <laughs> word describe Alex Rodriguez. Insecure. Greedy. Bag. A-Rod is so uncomfortable in his own skin that when you watch him, talk. It makes you uncomfortable in yours. There are few players in the history of baseball that have put up better numbers than Alex Rodriguez, but there's probably zero players who have been involved in more controversies. A-Rod individually outperformed expectations everywhere he went, but left every team he played for as the villain. He is seen as greedy, selfish, and according to other major leaguers, the phoniest player in baseball. Although A-Rod did not enter the league with this reputation, his actions that earned him this reputation started all the way back in high school. A-Rod didn't make the varsity team his freshman year, and his sophomore season he was considered a purely defensive player, but in between his sophomore and junior year, something strange happened. A-Rod gained 28 pounds that offseason and increased his bench press by 200 pounds. Although he may not look like it, A-Rod could bench well over 300 pounds by his senior season. Rodriguez would go on to be linked to steroids multiple times throughout his professional career, but it seems pretty clear that his steroid use started in high school. Two of his high school teammates have since come out to say that they were aware of his steroid use at the time, and if that's not enough proof for you, he began working out with Jose Canseco at the age of 18. Canseco was doing so much HGH at the time, A-Rod probably got a contact high from standing within 10 feet of him. So it seems pretty clear A-Rod was doing steroids whether he liked it or not. A-Rod was the clear number one pick in the 1993 draft and attracted the superstar agent Scott Boris. He is known to do almost anything to drive up the price for his clients, and he is usually successful. When it comes to agents, Boris is known for being the greediest of the greedy, and since A-Rod has the exact same reputation, they were the perfect fit. A-Rod called the Seattle Mariners who had the number one pick that season and asked them not to draft him, saying that he would rather go to college than Seattle. This was completely false, but it was all part of Boris's plan to either get A-Rod to a bigger market or force the Mariners to offer him a bigger contract. The Mariners called A-Rod's bluff and drafted him anyway. A-Rod went on to make public statements saying that he had no intention on signing with the Mariners, calling them quote unquote low class and claiming they had disrespected his mother by contacting her after they agreed to only communicate with A-Rod's agent. Boris wanted to hold out as long as possible and get the biggest deal he could. The negotiations lasted months and came all the way down to the wire. In August, a week before he was scheduled to start college classes, A-Rod signed a three-year, $3 million deal at the last minute. Holding out for money and calling your own team low class usually isn't a great way to win over fans, but A-Rod quickly made up for it. Within a year, he made the major leagues at 18 years old. He played in a few games that year, and the year after he played in a few more, but never really put up any great numbers. But in A-Rod's first full season at 20 years old, he met life coach and spiritual guru Jim Fannin. With his help, A-Rod practiced the power of positive thinking. He read daily affirmations and practiced visualization techniques. He visualized a batting title, an all-star appearance, and a greeting from his hero, Cal Ripken Jr. And all three of these came true. A-Rod quickly became a believer and began getting more in touch with his spiritual side, which got a little weirder later on in life. But at age 20, A-Rod was one of the best players in the league and had a squeaky clean reputation as a humble young superstar, which led to Milk and Nike endorsements. His reputation 
reputation inside the clubhouse may have been a little different. During his rookie year, A-Rod showed up late to batting practice with Taco Bell. His teammate Jay Buhner didn't like his attitude or his lateness, so he took his tacos, threw them in the air, smashed them with his bat, and made A-Rod clean it up. At the time, A-Rod was looking up to Jose Canseco as a mentor and apparently spent hours talking to him on the phone after games, which makes sense. According to a friend, A-Rod quote unquote can't stand fat people and really can't stand being around them. And Canseco is a really good person to learn about fitness and more importantly, steroids. Canseco has since deemed A-Rod his number one enemy, saying that he is the fakest person he's ever met and that everything he says sounds like it's been filtered through a focus group and this reputation is what caused friction between A-Rod and his teammate Ken Griffey Jr. A-Rod was having an MVP season in 1996 but during interviews said that he can't be MVP of the league if he isn't even MVP of his own team saying that Ken Griffey Jr. who had overall worse stats but 49 home runs and gave him protection in the lineup deserved it. This is a nice thing to say, however he totally reversed this act of humbleness later when he eventually lost the MVP award by one vote and complained about it. He told the media that it really hurt him that writers in his own town didn't vote him for MVP. Griffey has always been positive about A-Rod publicly, but it is reported that he called A-Rod calculating and manipulative at the time and is part of the reason Griffey eventually requested a trade from Seattle. The Mariners' general manager at the time later said he regretted trading Griffey instead of A-Rod. After seven years in Seattle, A-Rod was a free agent and he wanted to get paid. And honestly, he deserved it. In five full seasons, he had won four Silver Sluggers, made four All-Star teams, he hit over 40 home runs in his last three seasons, and was only 24 years old. A-Rod was the future of baseball and wanted to get paid like it. He made it clear that he would not take less money to stay in Seattle, which he had every reason and right to do. However, this made every Mariners fan extremely angry. And when A-Rod's free agency demands became public, fans of every team became extremely angry. A-Rod requested that if the Mets wanted to sign him, he would need them to give him use of private jets, his own hotel suites on the road, his own personal marketing staff, luxury boxes for friends, his own office inside Shea Stadium, a promise that the team's ad campaign would center around him, and a guarantee that he would have more billboards in New York than Derek Jeter. The Mets publicly stated that they were no longer interested in signing A-Rod, not because of the amount of money he was asking for, but because his demands made them believe he would be bad for the fabric of the team. But Tom Hicks, owner of the Texas Rangers, had the complete opposite reaction to A-Rod's list of demands. He offered a 10-year, $252 million contract. This was the largest contract in sports history and more than twice as much money as any baseball team had ever guaranteed a player. The Rangers are still paying A-Rod to this day and he hasn't played for them in 17 years. This was so much money, Alex didn't even care about the prior demands he made for the Mets. However, A-Rod reportedly was given a personal handler who would put toothpaste on his toothbrush during his time in Texas. Not as good as a private jet, but also not bad. The Mariners offered A-Rod a five-year $92 million deal, which let's be honest, anyone in their right mind would turn down considering what A-Rod was being offered in Texas. But don't tell Seattle this because they absolutely hated him. They deemed him a spoiled, money-hungry villain, and that year when he returned to Seattle, they booed him relentlessly and threw Monopoly money at him. However, the Mariners that year were way better without A-Rod. They set an American League record in wins, going 116 and 46. The Texas Rangers, on the other hand, were awful. Rodriguez played three seasons in Texas, and despite high expectations, they finished last every single year. During his three seasons in Texas, he had three all-star appearances, hit 305, had 156 home runs, 395 RBIs, won the MVP award, and only missed one game in three years. So you really can't blame A-Rod for the team being awful, except pretty much everybody in Texas did. At the time, baseball writer Ken Rosenthal called A-Rod the cooler because no matter how good he was, everywhere he went, he cooled the team down. A-Rod didn't get along great with his manager, Buck Showalter, A-Rod apparently stopped returning his calls by the time he left Texas. A-Rod also had issues with pitching coach Oral Hershiser, who was upset with Alex for trying to tell pitchers what pitches to throw and infielders where to play during games, using signs in a way that made it obvious to the other team what was coming. This could have been a part of the sign ceiling system Rodriguez had with other middle infielders around the league. An anonymous teammate told reporter Selena Roberts that A-Rod would tip pitches to the other team during blowouts in order to get the same treatment when he came to the plate. 
When another shortstop or second baseman came to the plate, A-Rod apparently would use subtle motions like touching his glove or leaning left to right to tell the opposing team's batter what pitch was coming and where it would be located. When A-Rod got to the plate in his next at bat, they would do the same thing for him. If what A-Rod's teammate is saying is true, this would have helped A-Rod a ton because the Rangers were in a bunch of blowouts. They were awful, and after three miserable seasons in Texas, A-Rod was upset the team wasn't doing enough to get winning players. He would later go on to say that the Rangers were a team made of Alex Rodriguez and quote-unquote 24 kids. Since then, A-Rod has said that he wished he would have signed with the Mets, and Rangers owner Tom Hicks says he regrets ever signing A-Rod in the first place. And since all parties agree that they didn't want to be in the same place, the Rangers traded A-Rod in 2004. First to the Red Sox in exchange for Manny Ramirez, but that deal was rejected by the players union because the deal would cut A-Rod's contract by $28 million. That's right, A-Rod hated Texas so much he was willing to give up $28 million to leave. Instead, A-Rod went to the New York Yankees in exchange for Alfonso Soriano. A-Rod would end up playing in New York for 13 years. These 13 years might very well be the most controversial and scandal-filled years any athlete has had with any team in history. I mean seriously, A-Rod basically kept the New York Post from going out of business during his time in New York. He was on the cover every single week. The first and most apparent A-Rod scandal in New York was between him and his new teammate Derek Jeter, which started before he had even gotten there. The two were actually great friends back in the day. One of A-Rod's teammates once asked him if he was going over to his boyfriend's house because the two were so talkative during Mariners and Yankees games. One of Jeter's teammates once gave Jeter grief because the two were goofing off while they were in a brawl, and the two shared the cover of a famous Sports Illustrated edition focused on MLB's new young shortstops. But when A-Rod was signed to the Rangers, he publicly said Jeter didn't deserve the money that he had gotten, and that the media loved Jeter no matter what while they labeled him as a dickhead. These public comments were enough for Jeter to unfriend A-Rod, who told the media he had to go to Jeter house to try to apologize afterwards. By the time A-Rod signed with the Yankees, the tension between the two was public and everybody was asking about it. Although the two would initially deny all problems with each other, as time went on the conflict became more and more obvious. On this play, the two drop a routine pop fly and Jeter stares down A-Rod like he just murdered his newborn son. This led Yankees GM Brian Cashman and ex-Yankee Dale Strawberry to ask Jeter to tone down his hate for A-Rod. On the surface, these two should be great friends. They're both extremely rich baseball players, date famous women, do huge business deals, and they played for the same team. The only difference is Jeter never liked talking about anything off the field. A-Rod wouldn't shut up about it. A-Rod admitted to the media that the two weren't close anymore, saying that they no longer had sleepovers and that they just grew apart. Jeter's response was to say, why doesn't he just shut up? The tension between these two still lives on today. During a charity event in 2017, the two were asked to do interviews. They agreed, but had no idea they'd be doing it together. Jeter was reportedly extremely pissed this ever happened, obviously because it was with A-Rod, and also because it was one of the most awkward encounters ever. Here are some highlights. This is a treat to see you two together. Now, since you both hung up the jerseys, you guys are friends now? Is that what's going on? Shortstop third base is exactly how we were back in the day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just together, right? The both of you. Yeah. Side yeah. Side. But you greeted each other warmly. They, the press made a little thing about the back and forth between you two. Was that real or serious ever? <laughs> you were up stories from about 20 years ago, huh? Gally, you sort of stole the whole show. <laughs> this interview's well, going all type of places. Well, go ahead. I haven't seen him in a while. But yeah, almost yeah, it's 20 been a long years ago. time. It's, it's a legitimate question there. Yes, the Met Gala last night. I was not there, no. <laughs> you were not there. No, right? I was not there. But did you? Uh, like? Each channel. <laughs> I thought you were going to try to make it there. Did you enjoy the game? The, the did Met I enjoy Gala? the game? The Met, the Met Gala last I night. I did, I did. And Katy Perry put on a great show. A-Rod knew that the public tension between him and Jeter would add challenges to his move to New York. But being one of the league's most hated players on the league's most hated team and the biggest media market in the world gave A-Rod challenges way bigger than Derek Jeter. One of these challenges was the Boston Red Sox. At this point in A-Rod's career, he had a fraction of the enemies he would eventually make, but one team that definitely hated A-Rod was the Red Sox. And this became pretty obvious when the two played each other in July 2004. Bronson Arroyo hits A-Rod. A-Rod tells him to throw the ball over the plate. Arroyo tells him he wouldn't hit a 240 batter on purpose. A-Rod curses at him. Jason Veritek famously smushes his face with his glove, and the rest is history. The Red Sox would come back and win this game 11-10. Some say that this is the game that changed the momentum of the Red Sox season, which eventually ended with them winning the World Series, but this other play between A-Rod and Arroyo was probably a lot more impactful. In the infamous 2004 ALCS, A-Rod hit a dribbler down the first base line. Bronson Arroyo, the same guy who hit A-Rod in July, picked up the ball and tries to tag him out. A-Rod karate chops the ball out of his glove. Jeter scores, the tying run is on second base. 
Except no, A-Rod is called out because this is very illegal. A-Rod would later say he doesn't regret doing this because why not try, he would have been out either way. Which is true, A-Rod really didn't have much to lose by trying to swap the baseball, but what he had to gain was a bunch of hate from fans and players across the league who labeled this play as Bush League. Red Sox players have not been shy to publicly criticize A-Rod since this incident. Curt Schilling said Derek Jeter would have never done that because he is a class act unlike A-Rod. Trot Nixon said A-Rod was a clown and couldn't stand up to Jeter, Bernie Williams, Williams, Jorge Posada, or other longtime Yankees. And Kevin Millar said Derek Jeter is a Yankee, A-Rod isn't. As everyone remembers, the Yankees would go on to lose that game and Game 7, choking their 3-0 lead. A-Rod would go 2 for 17 in Games 4 through 7. This was probably the most damaging series in A-Rod's career. From that point on, he was seen as a player who choked in the playoffs, cheated in the playoffs, and basically the face of the Yankees' infamous 2004 collapse. The next season, A-Rod redeemed himself and won the AL MVP award for the second time. He absolutely dominated the league, putting up insane offensive numbers. However, he went 2 for 15 and committed a crucial error in the ALDS in which the Yankees lost to the Angels. And since A-Rod is the most hated player in baseball, people obviously focus more on his playoff woes than his MVP season. Unlike Jeter, A-Rod was building up a reputation as a choker, and this reputation would only increase as time went on. A fan poll in 2006 found that 47% of fans didn't want their team to trade for A-Rod. Remember, he had just won the MVP award, was on pace to beat Hank Aaron's home run record, hadn't even been caught doing steroids yet, and 47% of fans didn't want him on their team. That is how much people hated Alex Rodriguez at this time, and it gets a lot worse. In 2006, he went through possibly the worst slump of his career. That summer, he batted 257, had 81 strikeouts, and committed 13 errors. According to him, he could barely hit a home run in batting practice. The truth is, this slump was relatively normal, but since so many people hated A-Rod, he was constantly attacked by everyone, including his own coaches and teammates. He was getting booed every night, even at home. His teammate, Jason Giambi, said that he doesn't know who he is and told manager Joe Torre to stop coddling him. Former Yankee Reggie Jackson blamed it on his body language saying that everything he does looks quote unquote scripted. Teammates told reporters anonymously that A-Rod seriously needed to get his eyes checked and might be afraid of the ball. Even rival David Ortiz felt so bad for A-Rod he tried to coach him through an at-bat against the Red Sox, getting A-Rod's attention and telling him to breathe because quote unquote it was too painful to see his face. And probably the most embarrassing moment of this slump happened one day when the media took a picture of A-Rod sunbathing in Central Park. That night, he went 0 for 4 with 3 errors. The next day, this bizarre photo was everywhere. A-Rod was getting so much ridicule, you'd think he was batting under 100, but in reality, he finished the season with 35 home runs, 121 RBIs, and was 13th in MVP voting. Yeah, that's how good Alex Rodriguez was at baseball. However, those stats made no difference in October. The Yankees were eliminated in the first round. A-Rod batted .071 with zero RBIs and was dropped to eighth in the lineup. He officially earned himself the title of MLB's biggest playoff choker. And although it didn't come out until later, A-Rod tested positive for stimulants that year and had a charity that raised over $400,000 and only donated 5,000 of it. That's 1%. Tom Verducci wrote an article that offseason and asked, why must Alex Rodriguez defend himself? He plays hard, is durable, and stays out of trouble off the field. Which means in 2006, A-Rod was already the most hated player in baseball and didn't even have a reputation for being an off the field distraction. But this all changes in 2007. This was a wild year for A-Rod, and a year where he transitioned from being a recognizable baseball player to a pop culture celebrity and the way it happens wasn't exactly great publicity for Alex Rodriguez. In Toronto, there was a pop-up on the left side of the infield. A-Rod ran by the players, camped out under the ball, yelled ha, or I got it, depending on who you believe. The ball was dropped and everyone was pissed. John McDonald and Howie Clark were visibly upset by the play and manager John Gibbons stormed out and argued with umps about the play. And even A-Rod's own manager, Joe Torre, wouldn't come to his defense, saying it was probably something he shouldn't have done. This play gave everyone who labeled A-Rod a dirty player or a bad person more reason to hate him, but this play may have not even been the worst thing to happen to A-Rod that series. That week, A-Rod was seen walking out of a strip club to his hotel room with the blonde stripper. That weekend, the picture was everywhere. This was especially concerning for A-Rod because he had a wife. She was so pissed off about all the attention the story was getting that she wore a shirt that said, F 
Fuck You to Yankee Stadium, which only made the story bigger. A-Rod and his wife even had to have a meeting with Yankee's GM about the incident. This was just the beginning of A-Rod's career in celebrity gossip. Magazines would go on to report that A-Rod was always with prostitutes, had multiple paintings of himself as a senator in his bedroom, and had videos of his highlights playing non-stop throughout his house. Most Yankees fans obviously didn't like this because it made A-Rod seem like a self-absorbed weirdo, but he hit 54 home runs that year, led the league in runs, slugging percentage, OPS, and won the MVP award. So they really couldn't hate A-Rod that much, right? Well, a lot of them did, and they began to hate him even more after that offseason he asked for even more money. This upset the entire baseball world for many reasons. Not only did people not have empathy for the richest player in sports opting out of the biggest contract in history to ask for more money, A-Rod announced this during the World Series in order to overshadow the game and grab as much attention as possible. Scott Boris, his agent, and A-Rod soon apologized for doing this, and Yankees GM and owner publicly stated that they would not re-sign A-Rod. Which was a lie, because even though A-Rod publicly said that this was a huge mistake and fired his agent for it, the Yankees ended up signing A-Rod to a new 10-year, $275 million deal. He had just signed the biggest contract in sports history for the second time in seven years. So if you hated A-Rod for being greedy in 2000, you really hated him now. That offseason, A-Rod hired Guy Siri to represent him. Guy Siri is an extremely famous and successful talent manager who represented people like Madonna, U2, and Lenny Kravitz. This Hollywood big shot was hired to give A-Rod celebrity status bigger than baseball, and for better or for worse, it worked. His first piece of advice for A-Rod was to win back public support by doing an interview with 60 Minutes. Unfortunately for A-Rod, one day before the interview was set to happen, the Mitchell Report was released, and baseball was in the middle of dealing with its biggest steroid scandal ever. And although A-Rod was not in the report, Katie Couric asked him about steroids, and A-Rod gave an answer that would later come back to bite him. For the record, have you ever used steroids, human growth hormone, or any other performance enhancing substance? No. Have you ever been tempted to use any of those things? No. At the time, most people believed this lie because A-Rod didn't have the stereotypical physique of a steroid user and up to that point had no real steroid accusations, but that all changed in 2008, which may be the weirdest year of A-Rod's career. A-Rod had fallen into a new celebrity circle. Madonna started showing up to a lot of Yankees games, and magazines started reporting that her and A-Rod were spending a lot of time together. And since Madonna was married to film director Guy Ritchie, and A-Rod had his own wife and newborn child, it was a big deal. Rumors spread that Madonna had left her husband for A-Rod, and that A-Rod's wife was in a romantic relationship with Lenny Kravitz. A-Rod, his wife, and Madonna all denied the rumors that any of these friendships were romantic. However, Ever. In July, A-Rod's wife filed for divorce, and Madonna and her husband split. A-Rod's personal trainer publicly blamed the split on A-Rod's new faith in the ancient mystical Jewish practice of Kabbalah. The religious practice was huge with celebrities at the time. People like Madonna, Britney Spears, Ashton Kutcher, Lindsay Lohan were all doing it. It has since faded in popularity, but for a while, A-Rod was pretty dedicated to it. His personal trainer said that Madonna and Kabbalah had A-Rod completely brainwashed, saying that he would only listen to music if it was by Madonna and every time one of her videos came on, he would be put in a trance. He also said that A-Rod was abandoning his family because he was taking the Kabbalah teaching of cleaning your vessel way too seriously. He said that he had cut off his friend A-Rod altogether even though it was the hardest thing he's ever done. A-Rod's private life was falling apart in front of the entire world, but he still managed to make the All-Star team, win a Silver Slugger, and lead the league in slugging percentage. That year, Jose Canseco released a new book titled Vindicated, where he accused A-Rod of doing steroids. Another book written by a man responsible for dealing steroids to MLB players for years also accused A-Rod of doing steroids, and A-Rod's former manager, Joe Torre, wrote a book with a whole chapter dedicated to A-Rod saying that Alex wanted to quote-unquote take up all the attention. And then in February, an article written by Selena Roberts in Sports Illustrated accused A-Rod of not only testing positive for steroids in 2003, but also being told when an upcoming random drug test was going to occur in 2004. Selena Roberts would go on to write a book about A-Rod saying that his teammates in New York would regularly refer to A-Rod as A-Fraud and tits because of the way his chest looked from steroid use. A few days after the article was released, A-Rod went on ESPN and admitted to doing steroids between 2001 and 2003. Eight days later, he held a press conference in front of hundreds of reporters and his teammates 
who looked like they didn't really want to be there. He admitted to doing steroids again and also admitted that he lied in his interview eight days earlier about not knowing what steroids he was taking and about reporter Selena Roberts trying to break into his home. A lot of other things A-Rod said during this press conference was also a lie and would be proven false by more A-Rod scandals in the future. Up to this point in A-Rod's career, this was a low point, and to make matters worse, in March, the pictures from the iconic mirror kissing photo were released. And just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, he discovered a hip injury that required surgery, causing him to miss the first part of the 2009 season. He returned to the lineup in May and was booed by his own fans. That year had an average year for A-Rod standards, meaning he finished 10th in MVP voting. But if he wanted to fix his reputation, he would have to perform in the playoffs. Going into October that year, he was 0 for 29 with runners on base in the postseason since being on the Yankees. But in 2009, something strange happened. A-Rod had one of the best postseasons in recent history. He batted 356, had six home runs, 18 RBIs, and led the Yankees to a World Series victory, earning himself his first postseason MVP award. This along with the infamous birthday party which included Jay-Z, his girlfriend Kate Hudson, and the entire Yankees roster temporarily healed his relationship with his teammates, who say that this birthday party was such a legendary bonding experience, it may have been responsible for getting the Yankees to the World Series that year. A-Rod's quick redemption story did not last long. That offseason, he was once again linked to steroids, this time to a doctor who was being indicted for moving human growth hormone from Canada to the US to give to professional athletes. The doctor admitted to treating Rodriguez but said he never gave him steroids, so A-Rod was basically off the hook. In 2010, A-Rod made another all-star team but had another disappointing postseason, and the only notable thing A-Rod did in 2011 was get fed popcorn by his girlfriend Cameron Diaz during the Super Bowl. He also made the all-star team and choked in the playoffs that year, but that happens every year. Except 2012, because he did not make the all-star team that year. But he did choke in the playoffs, except this time it was a lot worse. He was pinch hit for in game one, but was still made national headlines when he began trying to pick up women during the game. He gave a model sitting behind the dugout his phone number after being pinch hit for. A-Rod denied it, but a Yankees official did not have his back and confirmed it to USA Today. He was pinch hit for in games three and four, and eventually benched altogether for the decisive game five. That season, MLB players voted Alex Rodriguez the phoniest player in the league. That offseason, A-Rod had hip surgery and learned he would likely have to miss the first half of the year. He also learned he was being investigated by the MLB for buying steroids from an illegal lab in Florida. What followed was a massive conflict between A-Rod, the MLB, the Yankees, the Yankees doctor, and the federal government. In other words, A-Rod's downfall. A-Rod publicly stated he was innocent, but Rob Manfred, who was leading the investigation for the MLB, said that behind the scenes, A-Rod's team was trying to pay people off for crucial information and even allegedly threatened the life of the guy A-Rod bought PEDs from if he gave up information to the leak. A-Rod even reportedly leaked the names of Ryan Braun, Melky Cabrera, and his own teammate Francisco Cervelli, who were also being investigated for PED use in order to keep the attention off A-Rod. In the meantime, A-Rod was desperately trying to rehab his injured hip to return to the Yankees. In June, he tweeted that a doctor cleared him to play in games. The Yankees GM Brian Cashman told A-Rod to quote unquote, shut the f up. Cashman and A-Rod were not great friends at this point. Cashman apparently said he didn't even feel comfortable saying anything more than hello to A-Rod during this time. And if all of this wasn't bad enough, that summer, tenants who lived in buildings owned by Alex Rodriguez came out claiming that he was a slumlord and that the property he owned was in shambles. The Yankees seemed to want to keep A-Rod out of the lineup as long as possible because there were rumors that A-Rod would get a lifetime ban from the MLB, and if A-Rod never played again, the Yankees would save a ton of money on his contract. A-Rod was aware that the Yankees were likely trying to keep him out of the lineup, so to try to speed things up, he had a doctor go on the radio and declare that he had examined A-Rod and deemed him able to play. The Yankees responded by saying that getting a second opinion without asking them was against A-Rod's contract. However, the Yankees and A-Rod worked out a timetable and A-Rod was scheduled to come back to the team on August 5th. And coincidentally enough, on August 5th, the MLB announced that Alex Rodriguez had been suspended for 211 games for using performance enhancing drugs, the longest suspension in MLB history. A-Rod immediately appealed the suspension and that night was in the lineup for the first game all season. He was booed relentlessly. A few days later, he played his first game at Yankee Stadium and his own fans booed him relentlessly. And then, about a week later, he went to Fenway Park, where he was booed relentlessly. 
and when Alex Rodriguez came to the plate, Ryan Dempster threw at him. He missed, so he threw at him again. And even though this hit by pitch was as obvious as they come, umpire Brian Ornora let Dempster stay in the game. Because yes, even the umpires hated Alex Rodriguez. But A-Rod's off the field issues were a lot more damaging than being hit by a pitch. During a meeting with MLB and an independent arbitrator who was to decide how many games A-Rod deserved to be suspended for, A-Rod banged a table, kicked a briefcase, left the meeting, went straight to Mike Francesca's radio show and said this. What we saw today is just, uh, it was disgusting. And the fact that uh, the man from Milwaukee that uh, put this suspension on me with, with not one bit of evidence, something I didn't do, and he doesn't have the courage to come look at me in the eye and tell me this is why I did 211. I shouldn't serve one inning. A-Rod's suspension was reduced to 162 games. He sued the MLB and the Players Association for the suspension and the Yankees team doctor for his diagnosis of his hip in 2012, claiming he shouldn't have been cleared to play with the injury. He eventually admitted to the DEA that he did buy performance enhancing drugs from the lab in Florida, dropped all three lawsuits, and sat out the entire 2014 season. He came back in 2015 and had a surprisingly good year at the age of 39. He had an OPS of 842 and passed Willie Mays for fourth all-time on the home run record board. Halfway through 2016, A-Rod retired four home runs short of 700. During his press conference, he cried, and a lot of people called it fake, but during his last inning at Yankee Stadium, when Alex Rodriguez was taken out of the game, he was given a standing ovation. Since retirement, A-Rod has become increasingly less hated. Yes, people always hate A-Rod because he's given people a lot of reasons not to like him, but A-Rod has since said he's deserved every punishment he's ever received, although a lot of people will never forgive him. Yes, he's lied, he's cheated, and he's said and done a lot of weird things. But since this video is mostly about all the negative things in A-Rod's life, let's end it with one of A-Rod's funniest and finest moments. Alex, oh, think, that's just not right. Do you think you should be suspended? Who? Uh, Ryan. I'm the wrong guy to be asking about <laughs> suspension. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>